This is a new house for sale in my hometown. The price is a modest 775,000. Its approximate cost to build would have been around 275,000 and that is being generous. So that's a profit of around half a million pounds. It doesn't have a heat pump. It doesn't have triple glazing. It doesn't have solar panels or battery storage. It doesn't have a rainwater collection system. It's a good mile from the nearest shop and has a bus that runs into the town centre just three times a day. This is a new build, a new build. The finest, most up-to-date house building known to man. Is it fuck? Why aren't people angry about this? There's a popular Chinese proverb that says, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Basically, in the context of energy efficient homes, the best time to be building energy efficient homes is right now. But we've known about right now for quite some time. I actually used that exact line in my last video I put together about insulating old homes. And trust me, both videos do entwine. So stick around and see why. But in the meantime, why not subscribe to my channel so you can see last week's video, which is also up here and in the description below. So why are we not doing it? Why are we not building all new homes with an A energy rating, installing heat pumps, solar panels, gray water capture and triple glazing as standard? To my mind, it is absolutely shocking, bordering on criminal, and I'll explain why. But before we go there, please remove your love gun from its holster, or in this case, my inside pocket. Cock the trigger and shoot the like button. Anyway, let's get on with it. Regulations in the UK on new build homes for any kind of minimum energy efficiency rating are outdated and years behind what can easily and cheaply be achieved by house builders. According to official figures, just 2% of new homes built in England and Wales in the second quarter of 2021 were built to the highest energy efficiency standard. Britain's house builders will say they can't afford to build the highest energy efficient standards because they would have to put up the prices of the homes they are building and that would make them unaffordable to the poor public, which is really thoughtful and nice of them. But while we were all stuck at home during the pandemic, Britain's biggest house builders somehow made £7 billion profit between 2020 and 2021, which is a shitload of money. But let's break that down. Let's look at a real life new build house for sale in my hometown of Felixstowe. Yes, this one. So if you actually self build a house in the UK, your cost of building is going to work out roughly at £1,500 per square metre. So clearly, if you are a professional builder building, say, 200 homes on an 11 acre plot, you will have both economy of scale and be professional. So your costs are going to come in much, much cheaper than that. But for the purpose of this calculation, we are going to use that number. So this house is 182 square meters. And therefore, for the purpose of this simple calculation, the cost of building it is going to be 275,000 pounds. That's rounded up in case anybody has got a calculator out. And then we're going to add another £100,000 for the plot and infrastructure, which is also probably quite generous. So with a sale price of £775, that is a cool 400000 clear profit. So spending another 45000 to make that home truly energy efficient by installing a heat pump, solar panels, batteries, a rainwater collection system and triple glazing is still going to leave a pretty good profit of £350,000. So the money is there, but there is no incentive unless governments step in and mandate these things to do anything apart from the bare minimum. So let's start. Let's start with heat pumps. At the time of going to press, you can still get a grant to retrofit a, a heat pump in the UK if you don't already have one. Yet they are allowing new homes to be built without one. You seriously couldn't make this shit up. The way a heat pump works is that they run on a low heat, meaning that unless you have a well-insulated house, unlike my 1930s built home, they simply won't work. 
But if your home is well insulated, they are far, far more efficient, energy efficient than any other kind of heating. So much so, as I have said, the UK government are still giving it away out grants to get them installed in homes that have a gas boiler. Approximate cost to re retrofit a heat pump in this example house is around £15,000. So probably a lot less to do this at scale when building the home, even without the government grant. The grant is not means tested, so anyone can get the grant. The only exception is new builds. So if you buy this house as a new home, you can't get the grant. But as soon as you sell it, the next buyer can get the grant. So ultimately the taxpayer, yes, you, will eventually pay 15,000 for the retrofit rather than the builder taking probably half of that 7,500 off their bottom line by installing this at the time of building. And then there's rainwater capture. A rainwater collection system, quite common in Germany, Australia and parts of the USA, collects water from your roof when it rains that goes into the gutters and then sends it down a pipe to an underground storage tank. The tank is a big container underground that holds the rain until you need it from where it is pumped back into your home for outside taps, flushing toilets and for washing machines. That way you can use the rain instead of using water from the tap, which saves water and can also save you money. The rainwater collection system helps the environment by reducing the amount of water that goes into the ground that causes flooding when it rains. Instead of all the water going into the ground, making it harder for the soil to absorb it, some of it goes into the storage tank. This helps keep the water from flowing into the streets and making them flood. Additionally, by collecting and storing rainwater, you can use it later instead of using water from the tap. This means you're using less water from the main water supply, which helps preserve it. So during times of a drought, when there isn't enough water for everyone, having a stored supply of rain rainwater can help avoid shortages. So rainwater collection systems help alleviate flooding and preserve water, which helps avoid droughts. It's a relatively cheap system to install if you do it when you build the house, but retrofitting a large tank and pump into your garden can be expensive and disruptive. Flooding and droughts are both going to become more serious issues as the effects of climate breakdown begin to bite over the coming decade and beyond. So this is really something we should be getting behind right now. But OK, let's go to the next one on the list. Triple glazing. Triple glazing offers several advantages over double glazing, making it a great option for energy efficiency and comfort. The improved insulation can help reduce heat loss, leading to lower energy bills and a warmer home in the winter. Additionally, triple glazing can also reduce heat gain in the summer, helping to keep your home cool and comfortable. Another benefit of triple glazing is improved sound insulation. With three panes of glass, triple glazed windows do a better job of ex blocking out external noise, making your home a more peaceful and relaxing place to be. Triple glazing is more durable and long lasting compared to double glazing, making it a great investment. And the cost of fitting it compared to double glazing is negligible, but retrofitting is prohibitively expensive. So why aren't we doing this? So moving on, solar panels and battery storage. Installing solar panels on your roof together with battery storage can bring several advantages, making it a great investment for any home. Firstly, solar panels allow you to generate your own clean and renewable energy, reducing your dependence on the grid and helping to lower your energy bills. And who doesn't want to do that right now? Battery storage also allows you to store the excess energy generated by your solar panels so you can use it later when you need it even if the sun isn't shining this helps to maximize the benefit of your solar panels to making it easier to reduce your home's carbon footprint additionally having battery storage means that you're not limited to using the energy generated by your solar panels during the day you can use it whenever you need it which is especially useful in the evenings when energy demand is highest the truth is it is in nobody's commercial interest for you to use less energy and certainly not to get it for free. Think about that for a moment. I titled this video, New Homes, The Shocking Reality, and quite honestly, just putting it together has been shocking. Unless we can all reduce our carbon footprint, we are facing a complete breakdown of our life support system here on Earth. And again, installing solar panels and battery storage when you build the house is going to save you thousands compared to retrofitting it. New homes, the shocking reality. Why aren't people angry about this? Why aren't you angry about this? Let me know in the comments below. And why aren't people angry about having a new estate built with no provision for a local convenience store 
and such a poor, unreliable bus service that it's not trusted and therefore not used by the people who need it. No wonder everyone has a car or buys their shopping from Amazon. If you want your high streets back, you need urban planning that allows people to get to the high street without doing it in their private metal box. Do say, I'm angry about this. And don't say you didn't mention living roofs or wind power. I will do that on a future video for, for both of those subjects. But what do you say? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've not already done so, please do take a moment to subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to show me some love by getting out your love gun, cocking the trigger, and shooting the like button. And you can also share this video across any of these social media platforms. Doing all or any of these things really does help me reach a wider audience and hopefully affect positive change. And if you've enjoyed this video and found it useful or just weirdly compelling, you might like this one or even this one.